from Hudson Valley Vintage. Welcome to our Framed Fall Corn Quilt Workshop. So this is the project we're gonna be doing tonight and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, so um, we, we did a corn quilt last year back in the store when we were able to have workshops in person. And we did, let me show you the one we did. We did a large one. It was this one right here. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. I love this. This is still my favorite one. In Not the spring or summer, we did this one um, on Facebook, and we had a kit associated with it. I think we still have this kit. And you were able to pick one of two styles. So that was really fun, too. I discovered barn, well, I've always known about barn quilts, but I actually discovered this company. I didn't discover them, discover them, but I, I found out about them. And they sell these great barn quilt guides that we're going to be using tonight and that I've used for all of the ones I did. This is the first one I ever did. And I, after doing this, I was completely hooked. And I knew that you guys would love doing these. And um, literally, this is the first one I ever did. And it came out great. So it's really easy. They're great gifts. They're really beautiful gifts. You can hang them inside, outside, anywhere. The name of the company that um, makes these guides is called Baker Nest Barn Quilts. A super nice girl and her website, I'll give you her website so you can look. She's got loads and loads. So that's the website. I'm and not, you can, I'm not sure if you can point your phone at that little thing on there, but you never know. So this is the first one that we did. Um, this is the one we did last time and the one we're doing tonight, I'm calling it the fall framed bar quilt, but she actually did it as a winter one, oh. her snowflake star and it's really neat. So <clears throat> she tells you about the history of barn quilts. She tells, shows you how the colors should go. She also gives color suggestions. And then she tells you exactly how to, to map it out. And now, if you buy a kit from us, because we're selling um, the kits, we do that for you. And all you have to do is paint it. Tape it too, right? Tape, tape, tape it and tape, paint you it. You just tape the edges, yeah. but that's okay. So speaking of tape, you use a lot of, you're gonna use a lot of painter's tape when you do this. And we highly, highly, highly recommend, recommend that you use frog tape. Now, you're probably used to seeing the, the, the blue tape, which is, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it, it's good tape. But for doing a barn quilt, you will kick yourself. Because you don't want, you don't want bleed through in any of the, oh, in any so of those edges. Oh, it takes so much longer if yep. you have bleed yep. through. So you want to get yourself, if you're putting your, if you're doing this on your own, you want to get yourself some frog tape. And so it's green. And it's green. Super important. It's green. It comes in this little, it comes in this little case and it's green. And the reason and it's different, it has, it's treated with a chemical that when it, uh, when it comes in contact with paint, so water, um, it, swell, it swells up a little bit, so it locks the pores along the bottom and, and paint doesn't seep through. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. It works really well. Yep, pretty cool. So um, I also like to use the foam brushes when I do a, um, a barn quilt. If you're mapping out your own design, you need a, you need a ruler, you need a pencil with an eraser. It's really important because you're going to make mistakes, that's for sure. So let me tell you how this came about. Because none of us are perfect. No. So let me tell you how this became this. So I wanted something for fall. Um, and I really like the design. It's, it's nice and simple. And I like that it's a framed barn quilt. So my idea was to, um, to do it like this. So I bought this wood and I... Actually, you can see I started laying it out on the inside there. So I stained it 
I started laying it out and then I realized as I was going, at least for me, I found it so hard to lay this out inside of a frame. So I said to myself, you know what, I'm gonna paint, a, I'm gonna stay in a frame and then I'm gonna paint the inside and do the bar quilt. That's what I did. So this is what I'm gonna show you how to do. See, see again, I stained the inside, really struggled with Which it. Which you really didn't need to do. <laughs> so I, now I'm gonna flip this over and stain the back side. So you can do this with any size wood. What you real, what's really important is that, that it's square. So whatever size you want to use, you can, you know, you want it to be square. You can do a barn quilt. The, the, the barn quilts we're doing are um, one foot by one foot. Um, the larger ones that we've done are 20 inches, 24 inches. You've seen them on the sides of barns. They're enormous. So you can go as big as you want or as little as you want. I've also seen the little six by sixes, six inch by six inch, and those are really cute. So um, we're gonna start by staining this. And I'm super excited because it gives me an opportunity to introduce you to a new product for us. This is General Finishes water-based wood stain. I love that it's water-based. That means that it doesn't have a lot of odor, cleans up easy, um, and really easy to use. So we're using a color called Graystone, and I'll show you what that looks like right there. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit. And I'm gonna use my, I have a uh, little flathead screwdriver to open it. And even though I shook it, I'm still going to um, stir it a little bit with my stir stick. And there really is no order. And I have used this stuff a lot. I think I've used about an inch of this so far. It goes very far. You don't need a lot. So I'm gonna take my sponge brush. And I actually like to use a sponge brush no matter what kind of stain I'm using. Even if it's an oil-based stain, gel stain, I just find it really easy to use. And I'm not gonna, I don't need to go super heavy with this. but I do want to make sure that I cover the whole thing. And notice I am going with the grain. So now what I'm going to do is take my trusty blue shop cloth. If you've watched us before, you know that we live, we just like use these for just about everything. And I'm going to start where I started. So I'm going to start where I started applying and I'm just going to start wiping back The excess, the excess stain. Again, I'm going with the grain. And now you can start seeing, can you see the grain coming through now? Can they see that? Yeah. <clears throat> now you don't want to wait. I've had a couple of people, not with this product, but other stains that for whatever reason, didn't wipe it back and um, like it just kind of sat there and it gets tacky and doesn't it takes dry. A long time, well, it takes a long time to dry. Yeah, so guys, if you're using a stain that requires you to wipe it back, I think most stains do, don't they? <laughs> the secret's out. The secret's out. So look at, can you guys see, look how gorgeous that is. And this is like a piece of cheap, is this birch? Probably. This yeah. is not, it's I have to tell a, you guys. Uh, yeah. This is not like an exceptional piece of wood. 
It's but fine. The, yeah, but look at that. Look how gorgeous that looks. Isn't that amazing? Could that have been any easier to do? Super easy. Super easy. How many different colors of stain do they have? Half a dozen or so? Oh God, no, they have more than <clears throat> that. They have more, they have so many, so many. So if you notice on this one, you know, the only part of this stain that's showing is on the outside border of the frame. So you're probably wondering, well, how do you create that? I'm gonna show you. So, I'm gonna take my frog tape. I was very proud of myself when I figured out how to do this, because I... Did you use the width of the tape? I did. There you go. And if you really want it wider, if you want a wider border, you can get wider tape, but use, use the width and it's perfect. It is, it's you don't have perfect, to measure, perfect. You don't have to measure anything, you just lay the tape on. Yep. All you have to do is lay the tape on straight and you're golden. And you know what, if you're a tiny bit off, who cares, right? I'm not, you know, one thing about me, one thing about us, we are not artists, which I think means that we, we figure out how, how to do it and then we teach you how to do it, you know? So I'm laying my tape on the edge and you wanna make sure that you get that nice and flat. You don't want any bubbles. Now this is not the piece I just stained. I put that aside. That would have been wet. So this is I, like the Julia Child's cooking hour. You pulled another chicken out of the oven. Yes, this was sitting cooked. in the oven. Yeah, yeah. I have a little oven next to me that you can't see, it's off camera. So um, now I'm going to take whatever your lightest color is going to be for your barn quilt. So here it was this color, which I think is Champlain. These are fusion mineral paint colors. We do carry, here we carry general finishes and fusion mineral paint. So go ahead and when you do this part, use one of your three colors. Use the lightest color because that's going to save you a lot of time when you go to the, paint. The center. Yeah. So I'm just gonna put a little paint on my board. And again, I'm gonna use a foam brush. The foam brush is really helpful um, for not getting paint underneath your tape. So I'm just gonna do a coat. Okay, so what I would do if I was, if I didn't have one in the oven already, I would do another coat and then pull off. Yeah, let it dry. The, um, the tape. Mm -hmm. So once you pull off the tape, it's going to look like this. Voila. Well, before the lines before are drawn. Before the lines are drawn. So. You want to let this dry. If you feel like you know, need another coat, do another coat. Let it dry and then pull the tape off and it's going to look like this pre-design. Mm -hmm. So let's get started in actually painting the design. So I did this 
I did this all in pencil. I did it this afternoon. It took me about 10 minutes. Um, super easy. You need a ruler and you need a pencil with an eraser because like I said, you are going to make mistakes. Also keep in mind a lot of wood that you purchase from either a hardware store or um, an art store is not perfectly square. The other thing too is if you're doing this with the, if you decide you want to do this frame, what you want to do is you're measuring is, just remember, you're measuring inside the frame. So you're not measuring the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So just, just keep that in mind. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my painter's tape and I'm actually going to, um, hmm, this is always the hardest part, knowing where to start. So you wanna take your piece of painter's tape. There's strategy involved in this. And just get as close to the line as you can. And then you're gonna make sure that you get it down really well. You don't want to have any air bubbles. Okay. So I have that down really good. And I'm gonna be using the same color that I did my other board in. This is called Cathedral Taupe. Yeah, and I would say don't tape off too many at the same time. Just tape off one, paint it, pull the tape off, go to the next. Let it dry, pull the tape off, go to the next. And I'm kind of like dabbing on the edges because I don't wanna, I don't wanna go under. Even though this is really great tape to use, I just want to avoid going under there. And then I'm kind of smoothing it out. Okay. I just want to let it dry a little, see if I need another coat. So I'm going to actually... Do the bottom one. Keep going. Now, the coat of paint that you're putting on this, you want to use a nice thin coat of paint. Don't use a heavy coat of paint. As with painting furniture, thin coats are always more stable than thick coats and it's going to dry a lot quicker. I need one more coat there. So now I'm going to turn this over and I'm just going to keep going with that little section that I'm doing. Now, something I recommend if you're doing this at home, have a hair dryer handy.
So since I'm going this way, I can just do another coat, another very light coat. Now I'm going to take my tape off and you're probably thinking right about now that I'm wasting tape but what I like to do because I hate wasting is I like to take my wet piece and just stick it onto something because I can still I can use the other side once it's dry look how perfectly that came Now I gotta dry this a little bit, so. So if you use thin, thin coats like I did, So these covered nicely and I don't have to do a second coat, even though I did a thin coat um, because I didn't have any um, pencil to cover. So I'm just gonna put this tape over here. And I'm re like I said, I'm gonna reuse this. So um, I'm just putting it to the side to dry. And believe it or not, we're pretty far along already. So um, I'm just going to hit this with the blow dryer real quick. So now I'm going to start, um, I'm going to start in here a little bit and I'm actually using the inside of the um, tape I used already. Like I said, I hate wasting it. So I can use it twice as long as it's dry and just want to make sure it's dry. Okay. 
so this color I'm going to do, hmm, I'm going to do the Twilight Geranium. I really don't need very much. And, and you want to even make sure that you don't have like tons of paint on your brush because you just don't need it. So rather than like taping everything off and then going and painting, I like to tape it, paint it, and then move on. So and now you're doing a different color though, because now you're on the outside. I am, yeah. So now I'm going to do um, Seaside. Now is when you don't want to get on the phone and start talking while you're taping, and then because you'll take the tape off and go, oh, I painted it the wrong color. Yeah, <laughs> which is no big deal. Which is no big deal. It's not that hard. Now Seaside is, color, is covering really well. I think I'm only gonna need one coat. The Twilight Geranium, I think I'm gonna need another coat. Well, first let me know and I'll let him know. Mm -hmm. So once you use both sides of the tape, you pretty much have to throw it away. But you definitely can use both sides. But you can throw it away feeling good. Yes. Feeling not wasteful.
Here's my last one. I have to admit, if I was doing this on my own, I would be going slower and I would not be making all these mistakes. I am kind of speeding a little bit. Um, but it's gonna take me probably 15, 20 minutes tomorrow to fix everything. And what I'll do after I fix it is I'll post a picture of the finished product. most of it's fine. And you know, if you do, if you tend to use a lot of paint like I did before, <clears throat> when you go to your paint, just dab off a little bit onto a piece of paper or if you're using a paper plate like I am, even you can have like a paper towel nearby just to kind of force yourself to get some of that paint off if you tend to be a little heavy handed. I'm usually not, but like I said, I'm rushing a little bit. Okay. Oh, much better much better. There we go. Okay, so obviously I have to go back and I have a little bleed through there, 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 and there, which is no big deal. It'll take me, like I said, a few minutes tomorrow to do that. Um, but otherwise, I think it looks pretty good. I did get a little screwed up in the middle. See, it's a little bit different than this one. But honestly, if you saw this hanging somewhere, you wouldn't look at it and say, what's wrong there? You wouldn't think anything of it because it looks good. So guys, thanks again for joining us. If you're watching this later and you have any questions, please post them in the comments. If you want to order one of our kits, um, email us at- We can H ship, we can ship, yep. Not the ladders. No, 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 no. Yeah. No. The smaller, anything this size or smaller can ship. Um, HVVRstudio at gmail.com. If you missed that, post, it in the, post your email address in the comments and I'll email you. Have a great night and um, I'm sure we're going to see you before next Wednesday. We'll probably pop up somewhere. 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 Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you.